To another video, today we are starting 3.4 adding fractions. We're going to have two videos on adding fractions. One is on using tape diagrams and the other is using area models. So we're going to give them a try. Okay. So the key to adding fractions is that you have to be comparing or adding pieces that are the same size or the same fractional unit. So in this case, you can see that we're looking at eights. If Jacob ate two eighths of the pie and his sister Julie ate one eighth of the pie, then together they ate three eighths of the pie. So um, what ends up happening is that we are basically, and this is actually the next slide, we are going to have students practice this idea of if you have the same denominator, you just add straight across the top to create three eights. And you can see it in this picture right here. Now where it gets confusing is if they have two sections pictures. If they have two separate pictures to represent Jacob's amount of two eights and Julie's amount of one eighth, then a lot of times the mistake students make is they write three sixteenths because they see, hey, I have two of them. Hey, I have another here, but I have a total of 16 pieces. So we want to break them of this idea. And one of the ways to break them <laughs> that sounds awful. Let's break them. One of the ways to prevent them from that bad habit is to have them shade just one picture. Um, and you could even have them label that this is what Jacob is eating and this is what Julie is eating. And we have our total of three eighths. Okay. Once they practice that enough, what will happen is that they won't make the mistake of having um, the a different denominator. They'll realize that even if they have two pictures to kind of represent them, that technically what's happening is that we can put them on the same picture and we have our five, six. So again, it's this idea of we just add straight across if our denominators are the same. By the way, if it was subtraction, um, if we were doing subtraction of four six minus one six, they'll also get used to that idea of you just go straight across the numerators, the denominators just gonna hang out. So they'll practice this for a while. How long? Is probably a week or two. I mean, who knows? It could even be longer than that. All I know is they're gonna practice it for a while. Again, this is fourth grade. What we want to talk about, though, today in today's video here is what happens if the denominators are different because they're going to get used to the denominators are same. It's easy, easy, easy. And then we're going to throw them a curveball and say, what's one fourth plus one eighth? OK, so there are two methods that we're going to do. This video is going to talk about tape diagrams. The next video is going to talk about area models. Um, there are benefits to both methods, so that's why I want to share both. Uh, for this one, what we want students to realize is that these are not the same size. Okay, so one fourth and an eight are not comparing like things. And we could even have them think about like, hey, you know, when you see a pizza or a cake, you know, there's some skinny slices and some big slices. That doesn't mean that if somebody ate one slice, that those things are equivalent. If I have a giant slice and somebody else has a little slice, right, one of us ate more. Okay, so what we want them to do is if we're going to use tape diagrams, the easiest way to find a common denominator with tape diagrams is that you want two tape diagrams and you want to stack them so that their lines match up. So what I mean by this is that you can see here with my one fourth and my one eighth that what's matching up are these lines up and down right here. I know it's not great, but there we go. Okay. Idea, of course, is that if we have them lined up, we can ask our students, how would I need to cut one fourth in order for it to match the eighth down below? And hopefully what they'd say is that each of these would be cut into two. And I'm just going to draw dash lines to show those cuts. But what would end up happening is that that one fourth would end up equaling 
two eighths. Okay, so the whole point of these Kate diagrams is how to cut the, I guess it would be the bigger piece um, in order to make the same denominator. Okay, now, what's the tricky part of this? Oh, it's, I'll tell you what the tricky part of this is. It's your students drawing these by hand. And so that's where it gets kind of messy and confusing. I've got these really beautiful pictures on my slides because I used um, an online tool that I've shared before, which is um, mathlearningcenterapps.org. Um, we'll create these beautiful um, tape diagrams. But let me show you what happens if you have to do it yourself. Okay. So I've got this lovely picture that is perfect and beautiful, but let me go ahead and write it over here. So if I wanted to add one six plus a half and you can see my beautiful picture, what ends up happening, but let me show you how it gets kind of messy with your students, okay? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have two tape diagrams. Now you can have them glued together. You could have them separated with a space in between. So I'll show both. So right now for this top example, I'll show it with them attached. And down here, I'll show it with a space in between. And already you can, you're judging me. You're going, wow, Jen, those tape diagrams do not look great. No. It's hard to draw pretty ones without like having a ruler and being really careful. So the first thing I want you to notice is that they have to be the same length. Okay, so the two tape diagrams you draw together have to be the same length. Okay, it doesn't matter if we draw the one six first or the one half first. So order here doesn't matter. So you could do it either way. So I'll tell you what, since we have a picture already that has the one six on top and the one half on bottom, why don't I flip it? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a half, okay? And I'm just gonna lightly shade to represent a half. And then here's the tricky part. So where I cut it as a half, you wanna keep cutting. Oops. There we go, sorry. So it lines up. So now we're gonna cut this into six. Okay. And then we're going to represent this one six. All right, now we saw this in a previous video on equivalent functions. So, what we want our students to do is how many times you need to cut this one half to make it match down below. And what we'd want to do is we want to cut it three times. And then, of course, this would be cut three times. And so, this one half would be the same thing as three six. Okay, that's what you're seeing down here. My one six and a half, cutting it to match. And now you're probably wondering, how do we finish the problem? Well, how your students finish the problem is just add straight across. So we did this whole picture just to get a common denominator. But once we have a common denominator, we can just add and call it good. We're not going to reduce our final answers, though. For right now, we're going to leave it just as 4 6. Now, I will say you could technically have your students graph 3 6 and 1 6 all on one tape diagram to show 4 6. But otherwise, I'm going to assume that they're just going to want to get to once we once we've gotten our common denominator, we're in the promised land. So we're ready to go just to add a straight across. OK. So you can see again, two thirds and one ninth down here, really lovely, but let me show you again how tricky this can be to do it by hand. So here, I'm going to draw two thirds. And those big cuts, I'm gonna cut straight down below. We want those to line up, okay? So I'm gonna really do them bold so that they line up. And then I'm gonna come down here and we ask our students, okay, how would I need to cut this into ninth? Well, how about we cut each of these into three? And now I have ninth, and we just wanna shade one of them. All right, now we want to cut this top one to match. So we'd come in here and this 
would end up here. Two thirds is now going to be the same thing as six ninths. And then we could go ahead and do six ninths plus one ninth and get seven ninths. Again, when you're having your students do this, make sure that they're getting the main cuts of the, I guess we'd say our bigger pieces. So here, these thirds are bigger than ninth. So I want this main cut to match and main cut to match. And one half is a bigger piece than a six. So I want this main cut to match so that that way they're lining up nicely and we're able to slice and dice and make them have the same denominator. Okay, um, using tools, yeah. I mean, what we're basically doing with those tape diagrams are fraction tiles. Fraction tiles are great. The only real problem with fraction tiles is that um, you don't have all the denominators. So we could have used this for the one half plus the six. You can see that three six match up to a half. Add one more six and we'd see four six. So this is basically tape diagrams in um, plastic flat um, tile form. My problem though, is that the second problem I did with ninths, there is no ninths. So you'd have to kind of make your own fraction tiles maybe with laminated strips if you wanted to use those um, so that you could have every denominator, not just the ones that come with this package. Okay, and then of course, this is that app that I mentioned before, how I draw my type tape diagram, so you're welcome to try it. Okay, so can you always use tape diagrams? Um, technically, yes, you can, but there's just some things to be careful of. Um, they're great, students are first learning, okay? It's also great for a common denominator um, when one of the two fractions are going to be the common denominator. So what I mean by that is that when we have something like two thirds plus a ninth, that nine ends up being the common denominator. Sorry that my nine looks so funky. Okay, so that's gonna be your common denominator. Um, before that, I had a half plus um, a sixth. Again, that sixth is a common denominator. So this is a great method if one of the two fractions is what your common denominator is going to be. If you have two totally different fractions, like a third and a half, yeah, we're not building a two into a three and a three into a two. The common denominator here would be six. So it turns out that area models are better when neither fraction is going to be the common denominator. So if we had a problem like two thirds plus a fourth, or if we had one fifth plus three fourths. So all of these would be better used in the area model method, which is my next video. Okay, so uh, if you're thinking about, well, how come we're doing all these visual methods? Aren't kids just gonna do arithmetic? Yes, they are, okay. And that arithmetic that they're gonna end up doing is this that that has existed forever okay but their aha moment for why you multiply the top and bottom here by two is they're gonna say oh when i cut it to match i had to cut each of these into two pieces so each one became two so this is representing the number of cuts we're doing so back for the problem that was two thirds plus one ninth, that two thirds we ended up cutting into three. So we would end up having this. So this is the what we're building towards. Right now we're just focusing on the visual method of tape diagrams, but we want them to have that aha moment of, oh, that's why we multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by two. Oh, well, that's why I'm multiplying the top and the bottom by three or whatever it is in order to get a common denominator. And there we have it. So what you could do is you could go back and show that idea of how this is in fact uh, one half times three 
And that this one would be two thirds times three. Again, because each one of these is getting cut into three. And each one of these is getting cut into three. It just happens to be that both of these examples are being cut into three. But if I was cut into four, multiply by four, cut into five, multiply by five, same idea. All right, that was adding with tape diagrams. Now you may be wondering, Jen, what about subtracting? The only difference for subtracting is how you glue the numerators together. So honestly, this method can be used for subtracting as well. All you'd have to do is subtract the numerators once you get a common denominator. All right, with that, the next video, we're gonna do area models, keep an eye out for it. But I hope you had a good time learning um, adding fractions with tape diagrams and maybe had some of your own aha moments. So until next time, keep working hard, enjoy math, and I hope it's better. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.